Our conference preview starts today. We are doing the SEC and breaking down some of the top prospects within the conference and what prospects to watch as draft prospects in 2023 and what names to remember coming up on Locked On NBA Big Board. You are Locked On NBA Big Board, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up? My name is Richard Stamen. You probably know me better as at Mavs Draft on Twitter. I am a credentialed media member uh, across college basketball in some places, uh, mainly TCU and then uh, around combines, events, things like that. And then I'm also joined by Leif Tuin, who is one of the biggest college basketball fans out there, does a great job covering the game, uh, has been watching for pretty much his entire life. Leif, how are you doing today? And uh, it's been a minute. What, what have you been up to? I'm doing great. I'm excited. College basketball is really not that far away. Um, I've just been working. I've been calling calling uh, minor league baseball. So I'm just trying to squeeze in a few episodes every now and again. And I have a week off after 12 games and 13 days, or I guess 12 and 12, because it was a doubleheader, uh, one of these. But uh, trying to get some college basketball coverage and, and prospect coverage in, in the meantime. Hey, dude, Raphael called you the grinder, and uh, I think it's uh, showing right now that you're grinding. Before we get into today's episode, thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day. Again, I know it's a kind of down period of the sport. Uh, the schedule actually just came out as we are recording this on Wednesday. Um, but So I know things are starting to pick back up, but thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day. It would mean a ton to us if you could just hit subscribe on the Locked On NBA Big Board channel. We're really trying to surpass some of the NBA teams. We're trying to be one of the biggest risers on there. Uh, so it would mean a lot. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to like every video or anything like that. Just subscribe would help us a ton. But today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. So for today's episode, we're going to break down um, some of the top prospects throughout the SEC. We're going to do this in three different portions of the show. Like always, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about Arkansas first. They're who we see as the most stacked draft team. And then we'll break down Kentucky and Auburn kind of as one. And then any wild cards we feel we want to shout out as teams that are pretty stacked, some players that you should be watching for. So let's start with Arkansas. Arkansas had probably the number two, number one recruiting class in the country. Um, they are bringing in Nick Smith, who is the number three consensus recruit out of Little Rock. They have Anthony Black, who's from Duncanville in Dallas, top 20 prospect right behind him in the rankings, also in the top 20, Jordan Walsh from Branson, Missouri. And then they also brought in two other, really three other top 100 guys, Darian Ford, who's a combo guard, out of Arkansas as well, Barry Dunning from Mobile, Alabama, and Joseph Pinion uh, from Arkansas. Now, the last three guys we really don't project as one and dones at this moment. Who knows? I think Barry Dunning probably has the best chance, just given that he's a six-six wing. Um, so I, I think someone like him could be there. Then you look at some of the transfers to Ricky Council from Wichita State is a pretty highly regarded transfer. They also got the Mitchell twins from Art from uh, excuse me Rhode Island. They have a really solid team, and they'll probably be in the contention for the SEC title. But, Leaf, who is your number one prospect on Arkansas? Is it Nick Smith? I know that's the consensus. Yeah, it's Nick Smith. Uh, they also have Trayvon Brazil is one more guy. Uh, he played for Missouri in the SEC. A little change of scenery seems to have done him well in draft circles um, from the little that I've picked up. Um, on their foreign tour, he's had a few monster games. But back to your question, Nick Smith is my number one guy from this Arkansas team and in the SEC conference. He's a combo guard that that I think will end up be becoming a lead guard that just has this dynamism, size, speed combination that you rarely see in a lead guard, can defend, can facilitate, score on his own. And, he, and he's got all the attributes and measurables that you typically want from a, a lead guard. Um, he was from North Little Rock High School, as you say. He scored 27 a game, eight rounds and 7.3 assists as a senior. Played in USA Basketball, the Nike Hoops on the George Brand Classic, and he earned co-MVP honors in both of those. Um, expect him to be the, the guy for Arkansas, even as a freshman. Obviously, they had an older point guard this past year in J.D. Note. He was their scorer. I don't expect him to score as prolifically as Note, but I think he'll be the guy they turn to at the end of games and say, here's the basketball go make us a play, whether it's facilitation or scoring on your own. And I think Nick Smith defensively um, 
because he's going to be the guy with the ball gets overlooked for what may be his best attribute immediately is, is just his intensity and tenacity defensively. Yeah. Arkansas has a really interesting dynamic because they are losing a lot of players. If I'm not mistaken, I, I, is Chris likes, I don't know the eligibility always throws me off. I think Chris likes might still be there. Um, I, think, I, I think he's gone. Okay. So if he's gone, there's a lot of minutes that need to be replaced. Cause you have Chris likes, Stanley and Moody and JD Note, all guards are all gone from the team. So those minutes are just going to spiral down into Nick Smith and Anthony Black. And with Nick Smith, uh, we actually have an episode coming on Friday going a little bit deeper in, in depth on him. But I want to see how he plays off ball because you look at his high school tape, he was purely a one who he was playing. He was doing everything. He wasn't really spotting up. But like when he had the ball in his hands, he was the creator. There wasn't much for him to be a secondary guy. It was generally, hey, I'm going to be the alpha. I'm interested to see how he does pairing with Anthony Black, who's also a top 20 recruit, who's more of a point guard. He's 6'7", good athlete. I think he's raw. But what do you think of Anthony Black? Have you been able to watch? I know high school tape can be kind of hard to come by at times, but I'm curious what you think of uh, of Anthony Black, what you've seen so far. Anthony Black, what he shows to me is is he looks a bit like a fawn out there. He, he needs to develop physically. Uh, Nick Smith's more ready physically. They're both thin, but Black is mo- more slender, and, and Smith is more kind of fluidly athletic to his body. Um, Anthony Black's got a really good shooting touch, and he's a taller, and, and he played with the ball kind of as a pass-first guard uh, that can certainly score the rock. Um, so it's, it's uh, it'll be interesting to see how they navigate having two kind of freshmen that are used to having the ball in their hands. Um, they also Ricky council. And, and there's going to be, there's going to be no shortage of people who can play with the ball in their hands. Uh, uh, Jordan, Jordan Walsh can also put the ball in his hands. Um, Anthony black. I think his biggest leap will have to come defensively. He's got good size and versatility for the position. I think he can play on or off the ball. Cause I really buy his shooting stroke. Um, he rebounds well. He averaged he averaged eight rebounds a game, two of which were offensive in the America's Championship in 2022. And he, he's he's just got these good intangibles. And, I, and he shot 36 percent on 4.7 attempts in the top 100 camp as a, as a junior. So I think in in, a, in this small sample size of what I've watched him do against good competition, not just beating up on the high school opponents, which is still impressive. Um, but I expect that from all top 20 recruits. I really buy his fluidity. I'm not sure I buy him as the same tier of athleticism and ability to be a star in the NBA that I think Nick Smith has. And time will tell with Arkansas playing more and more what roles they have and how defined they are. But I think Nick Smith will be a a secondary, maybe tertiary score on this Arkansas team that really uh, is a good off ball weapon in the NBA if he's taken to be that role. Yeah, I I can agree to that. My one thing for me is with Nick Smith is he was hyped. He's hyped to be this like great athlete. Um, I actually don't see, I'm not blown away by his athleticism personally, but that's just a minor, uh, nitpicking in that. Um, I guess one thing I'm curious about before we go on to like Jordan Walsh, what do you think of Anthony black? I have a take with him on this. Like, what do you think of this take? Which is, I think he's not like, I don't have him as a top 20 prospect right now. I think he's really raw. I think he's going to surprise people with how raw he is. I think turnovers are going to be an issue. I, I actually don't expect his three-point shooting to be high, and I don't know what his elite trait is outside of like being oversized guard, which is a very good trait to have. But does he have a, a single selling point trait? Like, I'm curious what you think of that, and I think that's going to hold him back. Yeah, I, I think I'm a little lower than the consensus. You may be a tad lower than I am. Um, I don't love to make like pre-college basketball season rankings just because I, that's where I get my my great litmus test of I know who's good in college basketball entering the season. That's where I feel like my strongest suit is as evalu- as an evaluator is knowing what systems these players play, what to expect from players. And then when people overwhelm, I certainly take big notice of it. People underwhelm. I think I, I react to that accordingly. And so it's, it's hard for me to make a huge assessment based off foreign play and based off high school play. Um, but I think Nick Smith does lack the elite athleticism that you typically want a player that, at that size to have. Obviously, there are exceptions. One being Luka Doncic, whose greatest strength is probably being an oversized guard. I don't see Luka Doncic coming out of pretty much anyone, but especially what uh, Anthony Black showed me. I think he will be a good shooter. I, I think uh, I'm not sure if he's on ball. I don't know if his percentage will be amazing, but I do buy his stroke. Um, but but you're right. I think I think he lacks elite separation skills, 
I think he's a good passer, but I, I think he's a well-rounded player. A, a, a He's a good at a lot of traits, a master of none necessarily. So I'm kind of 15 to 20 range for him, and I just need to see the way his body develops against the physicality of the SEC, which I think is going to be an incredible conference. So we haven't really mentioned that yet. I think the SEC is going to have seven teams that are top six seeds in March Madness. So if he's able to score 12, 13 a game on solid, I'm not saying spectacular, but solid efficiency as a freshman, that elevates his stock enormously in my eyes. But if he struggles in efficiency and if athletically gets pushed around, then then we may have some lowering of the stock and he may not, may not be seen as high of a uh, prospect as many mock draft services have him at this point. Yeah, yeah, that's... Uh, that's not far off from where I stand. And then last one, before we go to Kentucky and some of the other teams, Jordan Walsh, uh, I, I'm not like super high on him. I think generally where he's ranked is pretty fair. He's t- right around 20, give or take on most places. I think he's going to be elite in his role though. I think he's going to be this year's like you, you see a lot of every year we, I say we, but like draft Twitter, like there's, there's a type, right? These guys who have really high basketball IQ, just understand where to be at all times, mistake free players that can do a little bit of everything and there's no general hole in their game. There's just some limited upside, but there is a lot of upside in a different way, which is they can be a ceiling raiser where you look at Grant Williams, like his impact on the Celtics was so valuable to that team where I don't know if they make the finals without him, even though he's not like, he's not Jason Tatum. Like obviously that's a different comparison, but having an elite role play or something like that, I think Jordan Walsh could be, you watch his cuts perfectly timed i think his jump shot is projectable enough i don't think he's like ever going to be your primary scoring option by any means i don't know what his creation will look like in the next level but you look at what he can do off ball and then i trust his defense i think he's somebody he's probably going to go first round because of that i wouldn't expect him to be like some star upside guy but like you're looking at a really high level role player what do you think of walsh I love Jordan Walsh. I, I, I think he's awesome. Uh, if you were, uh, let's see if we're on the same page here. I've got a comparison. Um, if you were to name the best glue guy in all of college basketball last year, who would you say? I need to think about it. Um, give me your answer. Cause I'm, I'm interested. I'm pulling up my, my notes and trying to see like from what I had last year. My, my, my answer, my answer would be Dalen Terry. And, I, and that's who oh, I yeah. kind of compare him to. I think Dalen Terry mixed with Scotty Barnes is what you're getting in jo- uh, Jordan Walsh. Jordan Walsh oh. isn't going to be the on-ball guy that Scotty Barnes is, but he's got more of his body type than he does Dalen Terry's. He'll be a secondary, tertiary creator for your team, thrive in transition, be the best def- wing defender on your team, and uh, – and really elevate your team. Like what did Jalen Williams do so well for Arkansas? He passed the ball. He didn't need to score. Uh, he was their anchor defensively. Took a million charges. They're going to do it differently. But Jordan Walsh is going to be the best defender on this team. He's going to push the pace. He's going to make the other players better. And I think scouts took notice of that for Dalen Terry taking a team to Arizona. When they were on, their A game was better than anyone else's A game in the country last year. They're lower. When they didn't play their A game, they were worse than a few teams. But I think what people notice is those games, even though Benedict Mather would score like 30 game, 30 points, and this is going to hurt your heart. TCU, I was at that game. The reason TCU and Arizona flipped the tides, it was Dalen Terry's defense. He had back-to-back steals. Benedict Mather had a poster dunk and a big three. Um, Coloco was awesome in that game, but Dalen Terry was the catalyst. And I think Jordan Walsh is going to have a couple of those games, especially if Arkansas makes a deep run. I think he's a prime Dante DiVincenzo candidate who's going to rise up based off playing well in tournaments and people having a big eye on Arkansas, we're ready to watch the top two guys or what they perceive, perceive to be the top two guys. I think he's going to really elevate his status. And, and then, you know, you can look at the athletes and Ricky council, the fourth and Trayvon Brazil, as well as people that could go top 40, top 45. But those three freshmen are, are really headlining the stat class for Arkansas. I love Jordan Walsh though. Yeah. And I'd, I'd actually, I'd change an answer for it. I and mean, Jalen Williams is a good one, but Wendell Moore too. I think that's almost a more one-to-one that Jordan Walsh can face since both are traditional small forwards in a way, like in just wings. But I like your answer as well. Uh, We're going to talk about Kentucky and also Auburn, but first a quick word from the NHTSA. You're hanging out with some friends and putting back a few drinks. A few becomes too, a few too many. As the evening comes to an end and people start to head out, you think of calling for a ride. Nah, you live nearby. You can make it home. Okay. It's no big deal. What are the odds you'll get pulled over anyways? And even so, what's the worst that could happen? Your insurance goes up, you lose your license, you lose your job, you total your car, you kill someone. Everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, that that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers 
on our roads to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again, play it safe and plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. So back here on Locked On NBA Big Board with Leaf to Lean, my name is Richard Stamen. And you probably know me better as at Maps Draft. We're going to continue talking about the SEC and some of the top prospects that we like in this conference. Let's move on to Kentucky. We just recapped Arkansas. Let's go to Kentucky. I think there's actually only two or three there, really. Um, but I'm curious, who do you think is the best prospect on Kentucky? I think there's probably an easy answer, but there could be room for uh, some sleepers here. Well, I think it, it's between the two headlining freshmen for them, between uh, Wallace and Livingston, Case and Wallace and Chris Livingston. I haven't watched enough of either of their high school tape to feel, have a definitive take as to who's better. I've watched one of the games in the Bahamas, and I've worked in my way through getting through another. So I wish I had a better answer for you, I, but I don't think it's the best player on their actual roster, which is Oscar Shibway at the time. But the best NBA prospect is one of the two freshmen who really have a, explosive athleticism. I would lean towards Case and Wallace at this point. But I, I, I would I think I'll defer to you on this one because I just haven't seen enough at a high enough level. So I've seen him play high school basketball, but not against the best competition. Yeah, I think um, I think it's Case and Wallace. If it's not him, I actually this is a bold one. I actually think it might be um, Damian Collins. I think he's up there for in the mix. Really good athlete forward. Um, I think he's going to be able to put it together a little bit. I accidentally saw him at my gym and uh, got to see him shooting around. He looked really, the shot looked good. And I, I think if that, that just general physical tool set of being how tall he is, and I, I think he's like six, nine, something like that. Um, I'm double checking this now and I should have had this pulled up. Yeah, six, nine, 200. If you have six, nine, great athleticism in a jump shot, you're going to be pretty good. I think for him, his freshman year was definitely a disappointment. We've seen guys like that at Kentucky turn it around. Obviously, different positions, but Emmanuel quickly. His first year wasn't that great. He didn't live up to the hype. Not the same level of disappointment, but it wasn't as good as the hype. And I think sophomore year, he took a jump, went first round. I think Damian Collins could be having that too. So I think he's a, in the mix. Um, Case and Wallace, for those unfamiliar, I, I think he's pretty similar personally to Tyrese Maxey in a way. I think you're going to see a lot of similarities throughout the year. I know it's cheap because he went to Kentucky. But I just kind of – I like his defense. I like his slashing. Jump shot, not sure how ready it is year one. He's also the younger brother of uh, – if you're a diehard college basketball fan, UTSA wing. Um, and now I think he's, he's in the G League. I don't know what team now, but uh, Keaton Wallace, his younger brother. Uh, so there's a basketball lineage there. What are – so I know you're not as high uh, – we're not – I don't think we even see equal on Chris Livingston. Do you have anything else on, on the Kentucky guys you want to touch on? Is there a sleeper you have, anything like that? I, I do have a sleeper. I think Oscar Shibwe is going to be drafted, and I think that's like the headline player. But I think Jacob Toppin is the sleeper for this team. Yes. Uh, he's got explosive athleticism. Speaking of basketball line, lineage, Obi Toppin's his older brother. Um, Jacob Toppin's got an over 40 inch vertical scored 27 points in one of the games in the Bahamas and shot the three very well. That's the key is the key for Kentucky this year is how they shoot the ball from three. Cause their team has depth and ap- athleticism up the wazoo. They may have the best 10 man roster in college basketball is the question is, can they space around Oscar Shibway and get quality shots? Because they're two of their most important players struggle shooting the ball in Oscar Shibway and severe Wheeler. So can Case and Wallace shoot the ball. Can Chris Livingston shoot the ball? Reeves is really going to shoot the ball well. The guy who I think helps his case the most, though, is Jacob Toppin, who's going to be kind of a glue guy with upside to score. And Keon Brooks was the beneficiary of a ton of open shots this past year. Didn't shoot the ball very well. Can Jacob Toppin hit those same shots? I think he's easily a top 45 draftable player if he can because great athleticism, rangy defender, and if he shoots 35 36% from three this year, easily a pick. Shoot, shoots 33%, probably still picked. If he really struggles, then that makes it harder to take him. But that's a guy I think people should keep their eyes open on. Yeah, I like that. I know a lot of people like Antonio Reeves, too. I personally don't know much about him, uh, but I know he's one of the better transfers. Obviously, Kentucky's always going to be in the market for that. Uh, but that's really a really shoot. good shout-out on Jacob Toppin. Let's move to Auburn. I think for the second straight year, they're, they're a pretty stacked team. I, I like Johnny Broom, the transfer they got from Moorhead State. One of the absolute most productive, if not the very most productive mid-range, uh, excuse me, mid-major uh, player in the 
in the country. I've been uh, looking at too many shot charts or something, but he averaged 17 points a game, 10 and a half rebounds, one assist, four blocks. This is at Moorhead State in the Ohio Valley Conference, so you have to assume these numbers come down a bit, but still shot 55.5% from the, from the field, 64% from the line, lots of like. And then they also have Chance West Street and Johan Traore. Traore is the fourth highest rated recruit that Auburn has ever had, and Chance Westry is number six. So these are pretty high-level recruits for them. What do you like in Auburn there? I, I think you're more familiar, actually, with both of these guys than I, than I am with either. Well, Yoan Traore is uh, – I think he's got a pretty solid chance to be a first-round draft pick. I think he's he's one of the more athletically dominant players bigs like he'll be able to produce immediately the question i have for him is what if he's playing the four and janai brim's playing the the five how does he score points how good well will he shoot the ball what will his role be because i think he really could have benefited from being kind of a slashing big who's who benefits with athleticism and power rather than finesse so i've got some questions i need to see him play at auburn but i i liked what i saw from troor i i know we recorded a long time ago talked about some random high school players and this was, seemed random during the time. And he was someone I, I said I had my eye on. Um, and Janai Broom, he scored, he had a 30 point double, double against Murray state who was undefeated in the OVC um, and won 30 something games uh, in the season. And he was easily the best player on the court, including Tevin Brown, who I know a lot of people in draft would really like um, and Janai Broom dominated. I think he's going to be a double, double machine. And he'll contend with Oscar Shibway, Colin Castleton, and all those bigs in the SEC um, for the most double doubles. Which you know you think it's going to be a given that Shibway is going to win that battle, but Janai Broom may have something to say about that. Yeah, Auburn Auburn is uh, not going to drop off significantly. They won't be the number one team, I don't think. But the guards they have, while they weren't the best last year, I think they're more experienced, which is an automatic boost. Um, and then also, I mean, Chance Westry is somebody who. His three-point shot is going to be really nice next to that core. And I, I agree. I mean, Triore and and Broom, I mean, especially Broom, I, I see him being, like you said, like just the top of the SEC bigs, which is absolutely stacked. Um, is there anybody else on Auburn you wanted to touch on before we go to the wild cards? Uh, no one on Auburn stands out too much to me as a draft prospect. I, I think they've got a solid team. Uh, the key to their team in terms of basketball success is going to be Wendell Green. Um, see how well his assisted turnover is. Yep. He can really shoot the ball with distance, but I don't see NBA draft prospects elsewhere on their roster. Um, and then I, I think I've got a few wild cards though, still in the SEC that I that I think could be climbing up draft Twitter's draft boards, and 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 some NBA scouts will really appreciate. And I think one of them could be a lottery pick, and I'm not sure that many people know about him. Dude, that is that is quite the tease. Yeah, I didn't even have to do anything. We'll, uh, we'll talk about that in just a moment. But let me tell you about BetOnline.net, our title sponsor today. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your betting needs, including on uh, college sports, NBA. Schedule just dropped. NHL, it's about to come back. MLB's in full swing, no pun intended. Um, but you can also bet on some of these, uh, these teams we're talking about as well. You can find reviews and news of every league, including, uh, like I said, all the sports. Uh, Bet Online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live and game betting, scores, podcasts. They got you covered for everything. Head to Bet Online today on your computer or your phone to learn more about the action happening. Bet Online, where the game starts. So, Leaf had an all time tease right there talking about some of these guys that he likes in the SEC away from Kentucky and Auburn and Arkansas. Uh, which I feel are the three strongest groups of talent right now for the NBA draft. So Leaf, kick us off. Who uh, in, Inform everybody. Just tell everybody where you got them, uh, who your guys are that you see as sleepers throughout the SEC that isn't one of the powerhouses. I, I actually kind of messed up my tease. Uh, I, I have two guys that are gonna, I think can be lottery picks, and one of them I just kind of forgot about that he had reclassified. Um, and he, I think he will be likely a lottery pick that is a household name. The other one was the one I was intending. And I'll start with the one I was intending. Uh, I think I think Brandon Brandon Murray has a, a – Brandon Miller, sorry, I was reading about someone with the last name Murray named Chris Murray just a moment well, ago. Brandon right? Murray was in the SEC last year. He, he was, but but that was that was unintentional. I was I had a profile of Chris Murray up. I have too many tabs up. A- anyway, long story short, Brandon Miller is a six foot nine, 200-pound small four for Alabama that's a freshman. 
I've been reading into some of these international tours. Obviously, the headlines are going to Kentucky and Arkansas. Um, but the comparison listed by many sites for Brandon Miller is Paul George. And I think that that's always a risky thing to give someone an all pro perennial all star type of guy. But I see what they're talking about. He's a difficult matchup for anyone to guard. He's he's versatile, can score inside and out. He can score out of isolation. He's a threat off the dribble. Can he can hit threes already? I mean, that would be like my big concern as someone like this who can rely on physical traits to score is can they shoot when people are just as athletic as, as them? Defensively, he's a terror, averaging two blocks in the EYBL as a small forward. Rebounds the ball, averaging nine rebounds a game. Um, my 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 concerns are just three point consistency. And how easily he's going to like navigate having really good athletes uh, with him on his team, and how to distribute the ball because they've got a lot of good guards. Javon Kinderly's coming back, and and you know Alabama's certainly not deprived for talent. And the question will be how will they shoot because maybe the lanes will be clogged. But if he's able to knock down threes and slash, like I saw him slash a couple times, that guy I think will be a lottery talent. And I don't think people are talking about him. The other one is Gigi Jackson was a very, very highly recruited uh, player for the next year's class, reclassified, decommitted from North Carolina, attending South Carolina now, and he's a power forward whose athleticism just pops off the page. Um, he, he's big, he's strong, he, he's young is my only concern, is there's going to be a lot of physical guys, like how is he going to guard Oscar Shibway? That, you know, that's, that's not easy. He's got the ball skills that you rarely see, um, that have drawn comparisons early on. And I don't necessarily buy this one 100%, but he's drawn comparisons to Bam Adebayo, who like, I think he's ahead of at the same juncture. He, he's a better with better with the ball than Bam at coming out of high school, better than when we yeah. saw Kentucky. He rebounds the ball. He's got those broad shoulders. Um, can he shoot? Uh, you know, we're going to figure that out. But he's 18. He, he'll be the, one of the youngest players in the SEC, but I, I'd be shocked if he's not a lottery pick. Yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting comparison. I'm going to go back to what you said with Alabama, though, because I, I also like Brandon Miller. Um, but there are a couple guys, and, and also shout out to our guy, Matt Landry, who is uh, basically my Alabama burner account. I know he'll like this, but Alabama's incoming talent is really good. I know Javon Quinterly um, got hurt in March, but they have a, a really good replacement in him, uh, in Mark Sears, who averaged tw- almost 20 points a game at Ohio. He's 6'1" four assists, six rebounds a game, almost two steals. That was on 44% shooting, 41% from three, 88% from the line. So the jump shot is very real. I like him a lot. And then they also have an interesting story for a big man coming in uh, back from, he was at Wofford his freshman year. His name is Nick Pringle, transferred to Dodge City Community College and just did very well there. Averaged, like I mean, at Wofford, he didn't even touch the floor, really. He averaged six minutes a game across 15 games. So it was mostly garbage time. At Dodge City, he was able to play real minutes, be good on defense, finish at the rim, and I think that's what he's going to do at Alabama. Granted, he has a little bit of competition just given the the scale up and everything, but he was like the number five transfer from community college or junior college, whatever you want to word it. I think he's really interesting. Leif, you got uh, one last one for you? Uh, I, I also think Charles B. Diaco for Alabama is going to have yeah. a big impact on this team, um, just to continue yep. the thought of Alabama. Um I'm very, I'm very curious to see Brandon Miller to to follow that thread. Um, Florida intrigues me from a basketball standpoint. Todd Golden's one of my favorite coaches tactically. He was at San Francisco. They have Colin Castleton will be their feature, but their guards are going to be very good. They've got Lofton, Richard. Um, I, I'm not sure these guys are going to be uh, extremely highly drafted, but I think they are draftable and they're older. They're they're skilled. Will Richard. Um, and Kyle Lofton here are, are impressive guards for those of you who don't know. Um, but I'm not sure because of their age, they'll be as, as highly regarded, but, but certainly people to keep an eye on. And I'll have to kind of mentally go through my head for a second. So you want to break down any, anyone else and I will, I will get back to you just real quickly. Yeah, there is, there's a couple others I was thinking of just that I like, uh, that I thought may, may have entered, uh, last year, but didn't, uh, one of them, Henry Coleman from Texas A&M plays honestly like a baby Zion in a way, uh, which I really like. I'm a big fan of him. Cario Okendo at, at Georgia, as that team continues to get more talent, I think he'll pop one of the best athletes in the country. And then somebody who I've been seeing over the summer just do really well and develop his 6'5 shooting guard from 
Ole Miss, James White. Um, I've started growing fond of his game, but wouldn't shock me to see him be a sleeper. And then one very last one uh, I'll shout out, since I've seen both of these guys actually play in person, uh, Lee Dort, who I, I don't know if he's actually going to be in the NBA, just given his uh, he's six nine, kind of a slow center. So I don't know if that necessarily scales up, but he is going to be good his freshman year at Vanderbilt. But Noah Shelby, a 6'2 guard, has a great feel for the game. He's from Dallas, so I've seen him play. Uh, really like his jump shot. I think it's pretty sweet. I think he'll do very well there. I think he's a long-term prospect, but he's worth waiting on. So, um, Leaf, if you don't have anybody else, stop me if you do. You got anybody? No, no one, no one yet. I think there's there's a few guys that I've I've got my eye on, but I but I have I have to see them play in college basketball and and play the high level competition and and I'll make sure I'll make sure to text you and so if we, if we retouch on this then we can we can bring it up. But I I don't have anyone I feel confident enough with my evaluation to say they're like bona fide draftable prospects that that are super deep sleepers. But I I do like to keep my eyes on a few and. Recently, I've been lucky. I, I, I hit Trey Murphy, as you like to allude to, which I appreciate. And you, you sometimes you just got to look at traits and then and see people that you watch. Oh, too much basketball, and you get lucky. So, no one in the SEC yet, but I think the SEC is the best conference in college basketball, and I think this is the best year of college basketball we're going to have in a couple of years with so much top level talent, both in terms of draft players and teams being loaded. I can't wait, and I know Richard can't either. Yeah, and we'll be back doing this a little bit more detail uh, from a college perspective as the season approaches too. So this won't be the last time you hear about any of this, but thank you so much for, again, making Locked On NBA Big Board the first listen of your day today on Wednesday. I know it's a little bit late, so if you're listening on Thursday, really appreciate it. Go ahead and check out the Locked On NBA podcast. They cover the league in 30 minutes or under. And with the schedule dropping and the big LeBron news about his contract, you don't want to miss it. They're covering it on they're covering it on blue pretty much. I, I've already got an insight on it. It's going to be really good. Thanks and have a wonderful rest of your day.